Now let's talk about independence. And Ghana achieved independence on 6th of March 1957. Now the, the history that has, the account that has been given us about independence is always told us about this event that I'm going to show to you, that this event represented the Declaration of Independence. Tonight we'll show you the calendar of how independence occurred and you will see how beautifully that our forefathers who fought for independence had fought for it in such a systematic and progressive and steady manner that everything that happened was according to plan. But let's see this event, which was the main independence event, the video that was captured by the British Broadcasting Corporation and published around the world as an independence declaration. Here it is. The battle has ended. And then Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. There is a new African in the world. That new African is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all, the black man is capable of managing the whole of us. And Dr. Nkrumah is surrounded there 63 years ago tonight, actually. 63 years ago tonight, on the 5th of March, surrounded by... Mr. Casely Hayford, who had been part of the independence struggle since the 1930s, Mr. Bedema, who had organized Nkrumah's parliamentary victory in 1951, the sergeant for himself, Kojobotio, one of his friends from London, who was later appointed Minister for Education. Uh, that event was a CPP rally, and uh, that's what we want to talk about tonight. Usually, it becomes controversial when you say it was a CPP rally. Yes, it was. It was not a national event. It was a CPP rally. Let's now take you through the details about what actually happened from 1950 leading up to this. There's a calendar that we've put together for you, showing you all the epochal events that occurred. And it's, it's drawn from uh, this book. It's entitled The Historical Dictionary of Ghana. Uh, maybe if, they, if they, you see the, of course, this is what I was looking for. David is by David Uswansan. The Historical Dictionary of Ghana is by David Uswansan. It's the fourth edition. David Uswansan is a scholar, a Ghanaian scholar, who put all this uh, material together. So let's go into the details. And let's start from um, the, we'll put, we'll put out that so you can see on the TV as, as well. Uh, so this is the first event that began the, the process towards Ghana's independence anniversary. And we are making the point tonight that Ghana's independence anniversary was structured. So that video that we showed you recently was not a declaration of independence. In September of 1956, everyone knew that Ghana would be independent. And we had chosen the date of uh, the parliament, I should say, had chosen the date of 7th March because it was the same date on which the bond of 1844 was signed. And so they wanted to get it 100 and I believe 13 years after the bond of 1844. So on 28 February, routing began along Christianburg Road in Accra after a colonial law enforcement officer shot and killed some World War II African ex-servicemen on the protest march to petition their after-service conditions. The route spread throughout the Gold Coast. This event occurred on 24th February, 19, 28th February 1948. So this was the first one. Let's move on and we'll see step by step uh, what happens here. Uh, the next important one was on the 12th of March. Six leaders of the United Gold Coast Convention, by now you know what that is, that was the first major political party to be formed that, who, who, that had the objective of seeking political independence from the British and they said they wanted independence within the shortest possible time. This was a group that included Dr. Nkrumah, but was led by J.B. Dankwa. So six leaders of the UGCC, they call them the Big Six, and they are on all our currency notes. So take your 20 CD now and look at it. The gentlemen you see there, they are the Big Six. They were arrested and sent to the Northern Territories. Nkrumah and Dankwa were among those arrested. That's how the news went out on 12th of March, 1948. So we move on to the next one. And uh, now we get into 1949. Um, and an All-African Committee, sometime in 1949, an All-African Committee with Sir Henley Kusi, who is Ghanaian, by the way, Sir Kusi was Ghanaian, as chair, was established in January of 1949, January of 1949, to prepare the new constitutional recommendations. Now, if you're a student of political science or a journalist, these are facts that you take very important. This is really the trajectory towards Ghana's independence. This is part of the history that has been obscured from what the account has actually told us. So in 1949, from 1948 routes and the arrest of the, of the Big Six, and then there, there came the, 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 the hearing, the Watson Commission hearing, where they listened to the Big Six and understood why they did what they did. The British then in 1949 said that uh, Henry, uh, Henry Cousy should chair a committee to prepare new constitutional recommendations 
for Ghana. And it was going to include self-government and, and a few things. Let's go on. You'll see what we've been talking about. And then in, on 14th of March, 1949, the Kusi Committee began its meetings. And on 26th October, 1949, the Kusi Committee announced its plans for a new constitution for the Gold Coast. On 30th December, 1950, the government published the new Gold Coast Constitution. So from the rouse of 1948... Coming up to this stage, Kusi Committee, they put a new constitution co together. On 30th December, the, the last but one day of 1950, the government published the new Gold Coast Constitution. Let's move on and see how uh, the things that happened since then. So then on the 5th to the 10th of February, elections were held under the new constitution for a legislative assembly. Now this will be the first time in the history of Ghana that direct elections had been held for a legislative assembly, direct elections held for a legislative assembly. This will be the first time. The CPP won 34 out of the 38 popularly contested seats. So the CPP won a massive victory. On 13 February, Governor Arden Clark met with Nkrumah, who was in jail when the elections occurred, uh, but now released from prison and asked him to form a government. Now, this is a regular way of doing parliamentary politics. Right? So the leader of the party that wins the elections or wins majority of seats in the country, is invited by the, uh, the president, or in this case the governor, in England it will be the queen, invited to form a government. So this is the first time that an African has been invited to form the government. This is the first time that the British have allowed direct elections to be held in Ghana as a consequence of what happened from 1948. So this is a systematic progress of what had happened. There were 38 uh, seats contested, popularly contested, and the Convention People's Party of Dr. Nkrumah won 34 of them. So President uh, Nkrumah, uh, as he later was, now is invited by the British to form the first African government. Then on 17th February, the Achimota Conference to study the Burns Constitution uh, that's 17 February 1956. We're jumping a little bit. The Achimata Conference to study the Burns Constitution began. It lasted until 16th March. Now, after the 1951 election, there was again election in 1954. All of this building towards independence. And, and so in, on 17th of February, there was a conference at Achimota to study the new constitution towards independence. And it lasted until the 16th of March. Quite a long conference. Let's see what happens after that. On 11th of May 1956, the British Secretary for Colonies called for a general election to resolve the constitutional impasse in the Gold Coast. After the election, the question of the form of government will be left to the new assembly. The CPP won 71 out of 104 seats in July's general election for the new assembly. So as independence was approaching, there was a lot of tussle about what kind of government Ghana should form. And we still talk about that today. Some people wanted a federal government, some people wanted a unitary government. And uh, the, the question for that was left to be resolved after the election. So the question was put to an election. The CPP wanted a unitary government. The opposition wanted a federal government. The CPP won the elections massively on the 11th of May, 1956. And in this election, it's parliamentary election, so there's no presidential election. On the 3rd of August 1956, the Legislative Assembly voted for independence within the Commonwealth under the name of Ghana by a vote of 72 out of 104. Okay, so there you see it. So on 3rd August 1956, this is way before 6th and 5th of March 1957, the Parliament of Ghana, the Legislative Assembly is the Parliament of Ghana, voted in a bill, so it's like a, a law, a bill comes to parliament, shall we vote for independence within the Commonwealth under the name of Ghana? 72 voted yes, and the rest voted no. The rest voted no because they didn't want Ghana to be under the Commonwealth, they didn't want Ghana to be a unitary state, they wanted Ghana to be a federal state, they wanted another different kind of form of government, etc., etc., different reasons why they voted no. But clearly, the majority was in favor of the name Ghana, which was selected, on the 3rd of August 1956, that Ghana should become an independent country within the Commonwealth. We knew that on the 3rd of August 1956, when Parliament closed, everyone knew that that Gold Coast was going to be called Ghana and it was going to be an independent state. So, on 18th of September 1956, the British Colonial Secretary announced in England that independence will be granted on the 6th of March 1957. Now, this is the part of the history that has been so obscure that we think that people should know. On 18th September 1956, the British Colonial Secretary announced that independence will be granted to Ghana 
on 6th of March 1957, which was a few months ahead, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. So about six months later, Ghana was going to be, Gold Coast was going to be independence. It will be called Ghana. And the date for the independence celebration was on the 6th of March 1957. This was known, declared, and signed on the 18th of September 1956. So you can call the 18th of September 1956 the mother date of Ghana's independence because it was that day that a decision was taken that 6th of March would be Ghana's independence day and the British Parliament granted Ghana independence on that day. On 16th of October 1956, a conference in Accra on the form of government for independent Ghana could not reach an agreement. Asante and the Northern Territories insisted on a federal form that will recognize their separate identity. So after Ghana had been given independence on 7th, Ghana's independence was going to occur on the 7th of March by a plan. It's not by accident. It's not by spontaneity. It was by a plan, and it was a plan that began to unfold from the 1948 routes, and that has brought us progressively and steadily on to 16th October 1956. It was not heroism, it was not dramatic, it was a plan. A conference in Accra on the form of government for independent Ghana could not reach an agreement. Asante and the Northern Territories insisted on a federal form that will recognize their separate identity. Let's move on. The next one is the 15th of November 1956. In a vote of 70 to 25, the Assembly endorsed Nkrumah's unitary form of constitution. This prompted the National Liberation Movement, the NLM, and the MPP, the Northern People's Party, to send a resolution to the Secretary for Colonies on 20th of November to demand separate independence for Asante and the Northern Territories. This is very, very important. And this is what Ghana had been through all the time that has been obscured from the history. There was massive confusion at this time, uh, which was un unfortunate. It was unwarranted, but this is what our forefathers did. So it, the, the votes, the issue about whether Ghana should be a unitary state or a federal state, and those of you who don't understand that, maybe we can talk about it later. Or you can just Google unitary and federal state. You'll get the difference. Okay, so in a vote of 70 to 25, the parliament, I like to say parliament because that's how we call it these days. They used to call it the assembly, but the parliament. The parliament endorsed Nkrumah's unitary form of, of constitution. This prompted the NLM, which was mainly the opposition, and the NPP. So the NLM was for political parties in the Eastern region, Ashanti region, that kind of thing. So today's MPP is the NLM and the MPP together. So the MPP was Northern People's Party, and the NLM was the National Liberation Movement, which was formed by the chief linguist of the Asante Hini back in the day to protest against the Nkrumah's policy on COCO. And that, that really was formed by our COCO politics. This prompted the NLM and the NPP to send a resolution to the Secretary for Colonies on 20th November to demand separate independence for Asante and the Northern Territories. They wanted Ghana to be two different countries. They wanted the South to be what Nkrumah would have, and they wanted Asante and the Northern together to be two different territories. Thank God they didn't succeed. We would not have had the Ghana we have today. Anyway, so on the 10th of December 1956, the British Colonial Office issued a statement in opposition to the division of the Gold Coast. And on 18 December, the Independence Bill passed in the British House of Commons. It became law on 7th of February 1957. This is very, very interesting. So the bill was laid in August. The Independence Bill was laid in August in the British Parliament the day they decided that 7th of, uh, 6th of March will be our Independence Day. That's when the bill was laid. And the bill was passed on the day that you see on the screen now, on 18 December. It is entitled the Independence Bill. So it is like, for today's context, the RTI bill that we've been talking about. It's a bill that goes to Parliament and it goes through the process of a bill, first reading, second reading, third reading, and eventually it becomes law. That's how Ghana's independence was. It was not dramatic. It was not out of civil war. It was orchestrated. It was the Ghanaian Parliament and the British Parliament sitting and working together to dot the I's and cross the T's and give Ghana independence on a predetermined date, 6th of March 1957. 6th of March, because 6th of March was also the, the day of the bond of 1844. So the bill was passed in the British House of Commons and it became law on the 7th of February 1957. Let's move on. We're getting close to independence and getting close to the conclusion of our story. And on 20th February 1957, 
The Prime Minister of England, Harold Macmillan, announced that all Commonwealth Prime Ministers had approved Ghana's independence and membership in the Commonwealth. The next day, the Queen approved the new constitution. This is very significant. This is 20th February, a yeah, few weeks before the 6th of March, Independence Day. And because we're showing you that this was progressive, this was a study situation, this was not dramatic, it wasn't heroism, it was careful thinking, planning, analysis, working together, putting government structures together. That's how Ghana's independence was achieved. It wasn't dramatic. So Prime Minister Harold Macmillan of England announced on the 20th February 1957 that all Commonwealth Prime Ministers had approved Ghana's independence and membership in the Commonwealth. The next day, the Queen approved the new constitution. So Queen Elizabeth, President of Ghana at that time, represented by the Governor General, approved Ghana's new constitution, the same constitution that was voted for uh, 70 to 25 in the Parliament in Ghana, went to the Parliament in England, it was approved by the Parliament of in, in England, and now the Queen signs it as law, like the way the President of Ghana today will sign the IRTI bill as a law. This is, this is exactly what happened. And this is what had been obscured from the history. So I'm sure that some of you watching are hearing all of these things for the first time. Then comes 6th of March, Independence Day. The British colony of the Gold Coast became the, became the independent nation of Ghana within the Commonwealth. So this was not dramatic. I'll tell you now about that event that we'll show you, which we'll show again, the, the famous Kwame Nkrumah speech. That was a CPP rally. Parliament had met on the 5th of March to prepare for the 6th of March. Many distinguished visitors were already in Ghana, including the U.S. Vice President Nixon. Many African Americans were, had already arrived in Ghana because from August of 1956, Everyone knew that Ghana's independence celebration was going to occur on the 6th of March. People were buying their tickets. Protocol was getting ready. The police was rehearsing. Everyone was aware in Ghana that 6th of March was going to be Ghana's Independence Day. They didn't wake up on the 5th of March sleeping in the middle of the night and heard a dramatic announcement by the great Osage Fo that at long last the battle has ended. Everyone knew that the battle was, was going to end on 6th of March. Okay, let's see a few things that happened after and then we can wrap it up. So that was 6th of March, and then 13th October 1957, three opposition parties and several original groups joined together to form the United Party, which has now metamorphosed into the MPP. It was led by Kofi Abrivabuzia and Mr. Simon Dumbo, Joe Apia, and Dr. J.B. Dankwa. So after independence occurred, Nkrumah had defeated the opposition in several elections. The opposition felt that if they continued to be four political parties in the opposition, they would never ever be able to beat Nkrumah in any election. So they held talks of their own, and the three of them came together to form one party, which would be the NLM, the UP, the NLM, the Northern People's Party, and one party in Accra came together to form the United Party under the leadership of Kofi Abrifabuzia, S.B. Dombo, Joe Apia, and Dr. J.B. Dankwa. So whilst we pay tribute to Osage for Dr. Kwame Krumah, we are reminding you that this event was not a declaration of independence. This event occurred on the 9th of the 5th of March when Parliament had closed. Many supporters of the CPP had come to Accra from the Western region because they wanted to be close to the Independence Square and the stadium where the main event was occurring the next morning. All the road up to the Parliament House, what is right today, to the bank, those of you who know Accra very what we now call the Professor Mills High Street, uh, all of that was blocked towards the, the, the Standard Chartered Bank and the Barclays Bank. You couldn't go beyond the polo grounds. Uh, the polo grounds now a car park of sorts. Yes, but that was the main polo grounds in Accra. You couldn't go beyond that. So all the supporters coalesced there, and they were hoping that in the morning, they will be guided to the Independence Square to watch the Independence Celebration. A lot of them came from the Nzima area in Krumah's fold, and they were very, very excited to see Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, their own hero, leading Ghana's independence. But what occurred that day was not a national event. It was a CPP rally. Let's see it again. The battle has ended. And thus, Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. There is a new African in the world. That new African is ready to fight his own battle and show that after all, the black man is capable of managing his own affairs. I want you all, those who have hearts on, to take off your hat and let the band play.
our national anthem. And from now on, that national anthem is the national anthem of the Gogo to be played on all occasions. That's the end of our sermon. May the Lord add his blessings to the word.